Hi everyone, this is a quick video to show off the list lookup uh, control in Nintex New Responsive Forms for Office 365. So I do have a lot of videos on this in the past. Um, I was looking back through them and thinking the quality probably could be a little bit better. So this is really an update to the, the video. Um, if you're already familiar with the list lookup control, there's nothing new to learn here. If you are new to the list lookup control, I would say um, this is probably gonna be a good start for you to understand how this control works. So if I had a simple list here, it's not so simple, it's probably got a thousand items in here, um, but it's based on, let's say, a bunch of projects I'm running. So it's got uh, project sites here, and I'm building a site inspection form. So I'm going to go out to my project site and do an inspection. So when I'm doing my inspection, I want to select, uh, let's say, the site that I'm doing the inspection on. So if I drag on a list lookup control here, and these are this is the section where we find the very SharePoint specific functionality, list lookup, manage metadata, people picker, as opposed to things that are really just um, input controls, uh, a checkbox, uh, radio buttons, text input, those sort of things. So they're not necessarily specific to SharePoint, whereas these ones very much are specific to SharePoint. So we've dragged on our list lookup control and I'm gonna call this um, sites. Now I'm not gonna connect it to the moment and I will show you some of that a little bit later. Now this will always default to the current site you're on. However, you can change that URL to a different subsite, a different site, a different site collection. You can pull data from different places if you choose to. And when you change that, you click retrieve lists and it'll go and interrogate the site for the list that it has. Now I don't need to click that because it's already preloaded that for me. Now I'm going to go and select project sites. So obviously this is this list here. Next, I'm just gonna say default view. Now you don't need to select a view. It will default to the uh, default view you have anyway. I think most sites have a so all items or the default view. Now we want to select the column to display. So when I click the drop down, what am I gonna see? And I'm gonna select site. So I'll come to here and I select site. And now let's go and have a look and see how it works. So there's a little bit of a delay there because it's quite a large list. So if I start scrolling through, there are a lot of project sites here. Still quite quick, but it's a little bit arduous to even scroll through regardless of how long it's to load. So how do we improve that process? Well, there's two things you can do here. Either if it's just finding a site is arduous, you do actually have type ahead. So if I start typing, it does client-side filtering, and by client-side filtering, I mean that all the sites are brought down into the browser, and then when I type, it filters inside my browser, which is which is good. Uh, it's very easy if you're searching across 5,000 items, you've got type ahead. However, if you've got a slower connection or uh, Office 365 is running a bit slow that day, the 5,000 items will still take a while to load. So how do we improve that performance because of those 5,000 items? What we can do is actually do a cascading dropdown. So if I clone this uh, control, so I'm gonna call this, uh, this top one states, this one sites. So what we wanna do is we wanna have a list of states from this list, and then when I select one state, I wanna see the sites that are being worked on in that state. So how do we go about doing that? So we come to our cloned control states and we've got it named correctly, it's got all the same properties cloned across, except we don't wanna show um, site, we wanna show state. Okay, so now we've done that, we go to preview, loads pretty quickly, uh, great, we've got a list of uh, states, Wisconsin, Texas, New York, California, Cal so there's a couple of issues here. One, uh, not particularly useful having them sorted uh, by ID, I think alphabetically would be better, and two, we've got multiple copies of California and New York and those sort of things, so, how do we get around those two problems? Now you could solve this by um, putting your states in a separate list and that's totally functional. Or we could come to our uh, designer, which is a new feature in Nintex New Responsive Forms for the list lookup, which is display unique values only. So we turn that on and that's going to filter down to unique values, obviously. So coming to here, now we're Wisconsin, Texas, New York, California, just one California. The second problem we have to solve is the alphabetical sorting issue. So the way I get around this is I select this, and as you saw before, I've got a few different um, different list views here. You notice I've got states alphabetical. 
So if I come back to my list here, and I go to states alphabetical, and I go to edit current view, now what I've done is it gives me the opportunity to, if we come down to here, uh, it, um, first sort um, by the column state, and so it's going to be alphabetical. I've selected the ABC or ascending order. So then what happens is, so if I put this here, there you go, Alabama, Alaska, so on and so forth. Now if we come to preview, you'll notice Alabama, Alaska, Arizona, and so on and so forth. So nice and alphabetically sorted, and there's only one version of each state, which makes it really useful. So once I select California, then these states are, well, there you go. So it's still not filtering. We haven't put in the filtering yet. So we come back to the designer, we select states, and we then go display, where is it? Uh, show all items, uh, show all list items. Now we turn that off. So we don't want to show all the items, we want to filter it down. So we say when uh, something in this list, something in here, so when state, 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 equals value, we need to pass in something that the user selected. And that something is this control. So we need to pass in the control value to here. So I go form controls, states, and so it's going to say when the state is equal to the control. Uh, so it's basically saying, you know, if someone selects Alabama, find me all the all the project sites. All right, so let's go to preview and see how that works. Uh, let's select uh, California, and now we see a uh, far reduced number of sites. Now let's look at somewhere else. Uh, Iowa. Let's have a look at Iowa. Yeah, this, so you can see it now. It's actually being filtered, and it's it's actually pretty quick. So if I go back to design, back to preview, and it's actually pretty quick to load. West Virginia, much quicker to actually load that now. Now, these are not connected controls. These are, um, how would I describe them? Um, these are not writing their data back to the SharePoint list. So if I come and open up the project inspection, and if I say um, state, save that. So I say uh, single line of text, and we say, um, site. Now, once I go and publish this, let's go and publish this form, we're going to use it and I'll show you what happens when a control is connected versus not connected, disconnected. Okay, so we come and click on new and so I'm just going to say hello world, generic sort of thing I always do. Now I'm going to select uh, California and I'm going to select um, Maple Plaza. Now I'm going to press submit. Now we're taking that data in and as you can see, it's put hello world, states not populated and sites not populated, ignoring the lookup column for a moment. I'll come back to that one. Now you would think that the data has disappeared, but if I select and open that again, the data does actually come back. It's because Nintex is storing that data hidden, hidden away. It's, it's, it's not connected, it's not writing those fields back into the SharePoint columns. So then if we were to come back to here and say states, and I'm going to connect this control, let's, uh, save, and when we save, because what's happened is something behind this form, which is here, uh, close, we've made it new columns and, and new properties. The form design hasn't been refreshed to get those new properties. So I've saved my form. I refresh my browser and when I click uh, states again I now have more options because it's gone and queried the list definition. So now I'm going to say we'll connect states to the state column and then also connect the sites uh, control to the site column. Now what you'll notice is it says value to store item ID or item text. Now I'm going to say item text because it's more useful than showing someone um, let's come back to here. So scroll to oh, change the view. Now just to explain what I'm saying. So we can either write out the, the value here or the ID. So that's, that's how SharePoint identifies each list item by the ID. And if I was to output the ID for a user, they'd be wondering what, 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 what use is that to me? So if I come to hello world again, I'm going to open it up. I'm going to edit it since we've made our change around um, connecting the controls, we press submit, we should actually see that data 
right back into the list. And here we go. So California and Maple Plaza. So now people can actually see what data they chose. So I'll come back and edit this again. Edit. And I change this to Ohio. But Golf Terrace sounds nice. So I'm pressing submit. Ohio and Golf Terrace. So that data has been updated. Now, so that's 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 how we connect controls. So we've got the um, the the lookup controls connected, just writing out values to a single line of text. Now, sometimes you may have a scenario where someone has built a lookup column. If you're familiar with those, so a lookup column is a little bit different. Let's just uh, show an example here. So, if you add a column, it can actually look up data to other lists. Pretty much the same as the lookup control. Now I can go up to my uh, project sites and go and select start site, and that's what I've already done with my list. Is it gone? So that's what this lookup column is. It's actually looking up um, project sites. So if we come to here, so these is these these ones are my own, and I'm writing the value out to a single line of text. However, this is so as you can see, single line of text, single line of text, single line of text. This is a lookup column. And when I drag it on, it's going to create a list lookup control. So these ones, ones I've built myself and not connected, then connected to a single line of text. This one is a list lookup control and connected to a list lookup column. So it looks almost exactly the same. But what you'll notice is when it's connected to a column, it doesn't give me the same options. It doesn't say, what value do you want to store? Because behind the scenes, SharePoint actually stores those two properties together. Um, and that's probably for another video, we'll explain how SharePoint actually stores that data behind the scenes and how we can use things like the lookup function, the pass lookup function, and how we can use those values to um, look up additional properties and display things on a label. But that's a more advanced topic. So this is just a really quick summary of the list lookup control and how it can be used um, disconnected, connected, and also drag a lookup column to your form. Hope you find this video useful. Let me know in the comments. Cheers.